What's going on guys? It's Elias. Welcome back to another video. In my previous MX-5 video, I was just getting the initial impressions down on the MX-5. Now it's been about a week, seven days I've been with this MX-5, the Mazda MX-5 or Mazda Miata, whatever you want to call it. And over 2,500 miles I've been put putting on this MX-5 with a little bit more to go here on this trip through Florida. Now we've basically seen everything with this car. We've seen the Key West, we've gone to Jacksonville, we went to Pensacola, uh, and if you don't know anything about Florida's geography, we basically did an entire circle around the entire states. And we wanted to see all the sites, we wanted to see all of the different cities and towns, and just kind of get the good, a good feeling of what Florida's like, because in a future video, there might be a new Flying Gato Racing headquarters, but more on that on my other channel, my Modern Outdoor Living channel. For today's video, we're going to be concentrating on what it's like to live with the MX-5 Miata for a full week and basically almost living in this thing. So 2,500 miles in a week is a lot of mileage. So we spent a ton of time on this, on local roads, on I-75, on huge interstates at 90 miles an hour, 80 miles an hour, you know, going down traffic, you know, a lot of truck traffic and things like that. So in this video, I'm going to go over all of my experiences, what I like, what I don't like. So. If you want to know about the MX-5, stay tuned to all the way to the end. Make sure to watch the video all the way to the end. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Let's go ahead and get started. So first, I'm going to start about talking about the looks of this car and how good the MX-5 really looks. I mean, this thing just looks great going down the road. I've seen a few other white MX-5s going down the highway and it just has a great road presence to it. I love the way this thing looks. My favorite angle has to be this angle right here. I love the way this thing looks. It's a little bit reminiscent actually of the S2000, just a little bit reminiscent. But you can tell this is a sporty roadster just from looking at it. And one of my favorite things is walking away from it or walking towards it after I park it is an experience, right? You're walking up to your MX-5. It looks amazing with these black BBS wheels. I think it looks really, really good with this color combination, white and black. and Honestly, very few cars these days, new, look as good as this does. Now, the other thing you'll notice, that this thing is tiny. Such a small little convertible, and man, knowing that you're going into a small little convertible, it's kind of an event in itself. I really enjoyed being able to just walk into it, knowing it's such a small little car, and enjoying that fact that it's, in sim it's simplicity and low weight really add to the fun of it. Now, the back here, actually, also, probably the second favorite part of the way this car looks. So you got the really nice tail lights, really awesome looking tail lights. I kind of wish I had dual exhausts. Now, it does have dual exhausts, but it's not, you know, one here, one there, like the S2000. Not a big deal. I'm nitpicking here. And even as dirty as it is, I think it looks amazing. Now, I was going to wash it, but I figured you guys want to see what 2,500 miles of Florida driving looks like on an MX-5, and even dirty, this car looks amazing. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments if you like the way this car looks. I love the way this car looks, and it actually, the more I drove in, the more I, I walked up to it every night, every day, every morning, the more I enjoyed the way this thing looks. One surprisingly strong aspect of this car is it's really good practicality. So you hit the button here, if I had the key. So grab this key here. Everything is pretty much keyless, so keep this in my pocket. Hit the button down here. Bam! Again, all the luggage is in here. We bought a few things, still fits nicely. We always have water available because it's hot out here. And man, the practicality, it really surpassed my expectations. I thought we were going to be struggling to get these things in here. I was actually kind of worried about it, but no problem. I never had an issue. Just pop them right in, and the trunk closes very nicely. The practicality continues with this cubby hole back here. So you open this up. You can store stuff back there, and then you can close it back up fairly easily. And you got some practicality over here. You got some cup holders, and then this thing opens up. We've got some cookies in there, a cable. And honestly, one of the best aspects and practicality of this MX-5 
is the fact that you can go top down very easily. This top goes up and down extremely fast. I'm gonna do it one handedly so you guys can watch. All right, so let's put the top up. And that's it. If you can't get faster than that, and you can do this on a stoplight. You can do this up to about 30 miles an hour. I've done it, no problems at all. And it's so good to be able to just do it so quickly because sometimes you want it up, sometimes you want it down. It's too sunny, it's too smelly, whatever the case may be. Your wife may get maybe getting too hot. That's happened a few times. So you close this up, you get the air conditioner on, perfectly fine. Oh, it's a nice area. Let's go ahead and take a look. Open the top. It's that easy. I love that. Now I've spent countless hours on this seat. And while it doesn't, it doesn't look like much, it's actually really cool. So it's got speakers built in to the headrests. I took a bunch of work calls on the road and because the speaker was right there, I was able to hear very clearly. I don't know where the microphone is here, but I was able to be heard pretty well as well. Very impressive. And the side bolstering, it's pretty supportive. It's got decent lumbar support. I was surprised about that. I, my back never hurt once. And the bottom cushion, actually not as firm as I thought it would be. This right here is a lifesaver. So this is your leg rest. You turn the knob and the whole cushion moves just like this. I had this at the highest setting because I like my legs to be as pointed as possible. That's what I'm used to in my race cars. And it makes, it, makes for heel towing very easy. It makes for long highway stints very easy. The foot rest actually came out very handy a lot of the times. You know, when you're on the highway going 80 miles an hour for four or five hours straight, a foot rest like this comes in handy a lot. Now, I gotta admit my elbows are a little bit sore from not having proper head rests or arm rests. So this is, you know, not that padded, not that you'd expect it to be. And this is honestly just hard. So my both my elbows are actually bruised up from you know, having to put my elbows on those, but honestly, very hard to complain about such a sporty little car like this. And its simplicity is where this car shines. So I've referred to this a few times already, but the simplicity of this car is what makes it so charming and so good. So take the engine, for example, the two liter engine, basically out of the Mazda 3. And it's the same engine that's used across the entire range of Mazdas these days. and the fact that it's so simple to maintain makes it so that you're not worrying about if it's going to break down, is it overheating. If it had turbos, you'd be worrying about the turbo lag or the turbo heating up or a lot of different things that you don't want to care about or think about when you're having top-down fun. So while it may not be as powerful as, as it should be, it's still really good and I, I love it. Another great part about its simplicity and the engine simplicity and the fact that it's a manual is that you have full control of what the engine is doing at all times. It's not, it never feels overpowered, it never feels powerful at all. You can ring it out to 7,000 RPMs and while it feels fun, it never feels like you're going too fast. And you know, you rev out second, you rev out third, you're basically only doing 60 to 70 miles an hour, right? If you rev out second, you're going 35. So you're not breaking any speed limits, you're not breaking any laws. Never once was I afraid I was going to get caught by a state trooper or a sheriff down here. And if you know Florida, they do love to get tickets over here. So while I was having fun and I was ringing this thing out, never had a problem. Another part that I loved is that I am not easy on, the, on my cars. And you know I'm not a, a hyper miler. I don't care about mileage. I care about smiles to the gallon, not miles to the gallon. But I averaged 36 miles to the gallon on this thing, going at 90 miles an hour on the highway, going through city streets, going through Key West, Miami, 36 miles to the gallon. And actually my best tank was almost 46 miles to the gallon. I actually was so impressed that I took a little video, take a look here, of my 46 miles to the gallon. It was amazing how that thing looked. So this car's simplicity just, just makes it so that you, all you care about is having fun and not worrying about anything else. Another part of its charm, it's just how all of the controls are laid out so easily and comes to hand so easily. I love the steering wheel. It's nice and small, very sporty feeling. Go ahead and take a seat in here. 
show you guys. Love the way the gauges are looking. Really enjoy how everything, every little bit of space is used up in here. It is very intuitive to use, very easy to use. Now the infotainment system could be better, I have to admit, but it was more than good enough, especially for the fact that it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You hook up your Apple phone or your Android phone and you have a really good experience. I really had a great experience using my Android phone as my main navigation and entertainment portion. Now, when it comes to speakers, like I said, this car has speakers in its headrest, but it's got speakers in the door and it's got a little tweeter up there on both sides of the car. And it does get noisy in here, but not overbearingly so. And especially around 60 miles an hour, this, the radio sounds just fine to my ears. So one of the things that really actually bothered both my wife and I was the amount of noise in the car. Now, of course you'd expect that, it's a convertible, but I feel like they could have done a little bit better job adjusting the noise level because at around 70 miles an hour, the noise starts getting almost unbearable. At 80 miles an hour, it's just about unbearable, the noise that you get from the wind and the noise. I found myself actually drafting behind big trucks in order to avoid all the wind noise that you get while driving this thing. It's probably the biggest negative of owning a convertible soft top like this, especially one so thin as this. So anytime I pass by a truck, anytime you pass by a loud vehicle, it's basically like having your windows open on a, on a regular car. This soft top does not do much for sound deadening, almost at all. So it became a little overbearing to do a four hour stint on the highway with the soft top at 80, 90 miles an hour. Other than that, I mean, even, in the, even on the highway, I was pretty happy to be here. It was a great place to be in. It was a great, you know, sporty little feeling that you get when you gotta dart around traffic sometimes, it's for fun. You know, it, it, it brings out the, the teenager out of you. You know, you want to do a little bit more risky things because it's a simple and fun car that you end up doing those things. Another thing that I want to mention is that the air conditioner, while it works perfectly fine and really nice, it's a little bit noisy. You actually hear it when the compressor kicks on and, you know, something you'd kind of expect in a car so small. Just something that I wanted to note. I didn't find it annoying, but something to keep in mind. Overall, I was very impressed with the MX-5. I'm actually so impressed that I want to possibly pick one up at some point. I'd like to go with the ND2 version. Uh, this is the ND1 version. The ND2 has a little bit more horsepower and higher revving engine. And the upgrades that I would do to it would be a better shift shifter, because the shift quality is good, but not quite as good as I'm used to from my F2000 or my Civic Type R. I would probably get uh, some stiffer springs. The springs on this are very soft and when you're taking the turns, the car kind of rolls around. It makes for a very comfortable ride, but I would get, I would get stiffer springs, I think. I wouldn't, need, I wouldn't go call over, just slightly stiffer springs would fix most of the issues. And then finally, one of the things that I would probably do is get the, the RF version, the retractable fastback version with the metal roof. My wife would thank me for getting the retractable fastback because the noise levels really get to her and they really bother her. I'm okay with them, but with the RF, I think that would be a really fun little runabout car. You can get groceries, you can fit a lot of stuff in here. You get 35 to 40 miles to the gallon if you're careful. Uh, and if you're not careful, 35 is really easy to get. So, do I love the car? Absolutely. Do I recommend it? Definitely. If you're looking for a sports car, you would be hard pressed not to drive one of these first. I would compare this to a Corvette, to an S2000, to basically any two-seater sports car that's out there. This should, this definitely competes with all of those. Just outright speed is not all it's cracked up to be. I think fun should also be part of the equation. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly did. And thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Peace.